If he passed me, I will call him. Praise the Lord. Actually, I that, was, that, that brother was asking on how to deal with a woman that, that had the spirit of anger. Was that his question? There is, there is, there is no law. There is no set way, specific uh, prescription on how to deal with a woman that has anger. Every woman has her peculiarity. And the thing that you will use to quench the anger on one woman may not work on another woman. Do you understand? So, the man must study his wife very well. Some, if you want the anger to cool, the money you will give her. Hey, hey, you understand? And some, all the majors want is for you to just hug and say, okay, no, 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 you don't do. No, no, you don't do. You don't do. You don't do. Then you go look like it, then you go smile. You see? And some, praise God. Now one brother talk this one. Now one brother talk, he say, no, be me the talk about. He said, when the woman start, now when he slap her, now he they come to his senses. <laughs> no, be me talk about. <laughs> but I don't recommend that one. <laughs> <I don't recommend. laughs> but he said, I saw in the hand you want. No, that one, that's a very wrong prescription. Because some people will say, hey, did they work? <laughs> you know, they work, go, go come out her teeth for nothing. Praise the Lord. Let me hear you. Praise the Lord. I was privileged to be among men, and this question of marriage and divorce came up. The young man, the man is about 60 years old. He said he got married to this woman when they were very young. And things was okay with them. Prior to the marriage, the woman was pretending as if she was a Christian. But unknowing to him, the woman was a possessed demon. Eventually, they got married. He said he worked to the extent of working with the IMF. And this woman was torturing him. Knowing fully well that he was a Christian, he could not divorce this woman. And this woman had only one child for him. On the long run, the thing that really touched him, the woman killed the only son. He looked left, he looked right. What will I do? I am a Christian. I cannot divorce this woman. This man, I'm telling you, house houses in Abuja. So what's your question? The issue now, my question now, he was asking me this question. Should he divorce the woman who is a possessed demon? Or should he continue to live with the woman? Or should he go and marry another woman? I said to him, there and then, it is not permissible for a man to marry another wife. The only thing you will do, since he is a demon, you just have to pray. The Bible says, suffer not the wish to live. The highest thing you will do is to pray if it's a witch actually. The well, God, God should take her away from you. <laughs> that is what my counseling was to, to, her, to him. Another one came up again and said he is a great man that worked with your passenger actually. That he flew with your passenger. That everything he had, this woman sold everything. Today he is having nothing. And he is living overseas. What will he do? Now listen. You see, when two people have problem, before you pass your judgment, you must listen to the other party. Sometimes, the demon in the woman 
may be receiving, may be provoked by the actions of the man too sometimes. So you have to understand that you can truly not give a meaningful counsel to that man until you also meet that woman to hear how he lives with her too. I remember you are talking about a Christian. If he is a Christian, you are supposed to ask him what effort he has done spiritually since he noticed she is not a normal woman. What effort have you made to help her out of that problem? Number three, what is it that attracted him to marry her? Did he love her? So these are the things you put into consideration before you can counsel such a person. The second person that said all he had, somebody sold it. His wife sold them. It's difficult for me to believe that. Why I say so is you cannot sell somebody's property if he is the owner of the property. Whoever buys it, you can collect your thing back. He lives abroad, so he, he knows his rights. Even if he's living in the village, nobody can carry your property and sell it, even if it's your son. Because all property is supposed to carry your own title. So how can somebody carry my property and go and sell? Whoever buy it, two of you, you will go to jail. And I'll get my property back. So tell the person to go to court. Go to court and claim back all the wife has sold. Thank you. Go to police. Yes. Church, praise the Lord. So, there is this, um, this scripture that has formed a basic for what people look as a redress in marriage. That's um, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. It says here, and I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. And whosoever married her which is put away, committed adultery. I understand very well that Bible makes it expressly clear the difference between fornication and adultery. The Bible does what? Makes it expressly clear the difference between fornication. And what, adultery. What did the Bible say as the difference between fornication and adultery? We know that, maybe as Bible scholars, we know that fornication. You said, you said the Bible makes it clear. It means you have Bible reference. Give it to us. Okay, let me better put it as a question, sir. What is the difference between fornication and adultery? Uh -uh, why are you throwing the question to me again? Uh -uh. <laughs> Maybe I took it to be a common knowledge issue. Why are you throwing it back to me again? <laughs> you are speaking confidently. And you didn't know that you have no Bible reference for it. You are saying Bible say when the Bible didn't say anything concerning that. Then if that perception you is wrong. You are only using English to define fornication and adultery. Not that the Bible says so. Okay, sir. Oh, yeah, continue your question. Okay, let me start from the right way again because I looked at it as something that was almost very simple. Sir, what is the difference between fornication and adultery? They are all sexual sin. Okay, sir. They are all sexual sin out of wedlock. It's true that this word is used interchangeably fornication and adultery. And in the definition, English definition of fornication is two unmarried people, you know, engaging in a sexual relationship yeah. or a single person 
involving in sexual relationship. And when a person is married and goes out of wedlock to have a relationship with a man that is not her husband or the woman that is not his wife, we use the word adultery. Why adultery? Because adultery comes from the English word adulteration. What is adulteration? That is, it is wrong mixture. It is wrong mixture. The seed of your husband laid inside of you. Don't allow another seed come there. It adulterates that process. That is why they say adultery. What is fornication? Fornication. Listen. Also, I wish I had this before. They would have opened dictionary. I'm not an English student, neither am I an English teacher. But common sense tells us. Okay, sir. What is the meaning of spiritual fornication? What is the meaning of spiritual fornication? Answer me. I've not encountered it in the Bible. You are already married to Jesus. And you go to Babalao. You have committed spiritual fornication. So, can you see that the word fornication and adultery, it depends on what you want to convey and the context of your usage. So, spiritual fornication is because you are already, you are supposed to live true to your spiritual husband, the Lord Jesus Christ. But here you are, again, having another spiritual husband, the devil. And the Bible calls it spiritual fornication. You have to live true to one man. So, Matthew 19 verse 9. Lord, I know where you are going. You've not asked your question. Yes, I know. But I know where you are going. Okay, sir. And because I have had, see, stop using intellect to explain scripture. Somebody took time, I don't know whether you are the person, took time and sent me a text message and was trying to prove that the sin referred to in Matthew 20 and Matthew 19, verse 9 is the sin that the woman committed before they got married. Because he said you cannot put away your wife except it be for fornication. And he's saying since fornication is a sin that unmarried people commit, it means it is the sin that she committed before you married her. Now that is their interpretation. Is that not what you want to ask? Yes, sir. I know where you're going to. <laughs> Praise God. Listen, church. Amen. The Bible says that if you two people marry, a man married his wife, I think that is Jeremiah. Is it Jeremiah or, or Deuteronomy? Okay. I've forgotten the scripture now. It says, no, let's read it. It's, it's, I think it's Deuteronomy. I think it's Deuteronomy. Chapter 24. It says, when a man, verse 1, has taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of the house, or if the latter husband die, we took her to be his wife. Her former husband, the first husband, we sent her away. May not take her again to be his wife. Why? 
He said, after that she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Lord. That scripture, even people who don't know scripture, the hiddens, some cultures, if you catch your wife with another man, you are not to come to her sexually until some rituals are performed. If you go in her, you will die. Who is aware of such culture? You see? It's even in the Bible. You must undergo that is evil unbelievers, they know it. So, that verse 19 is if the fornication there is fornicating when she is married to you. So you will say, why didn't they say except the people are adultery? That's why I say, remember, we are not reading the Hebrew form. We are reading the interpretation. Like there are some words in the Bible that are used. The English language to interpret from the Greek. That you have to get, for instance, the word of God. There is a word of God which is uh, 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 um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, that is the voice. You know, okay. There is the voice of God that is Rema and there is a word of God that is Logos. So, when you are reading the Bible, you have to know, is he referring to Rema or to Logos? Now, there is a word, faith. When you read it, faith also means confidence. But faith also means revelation. So, when you are reading the Bible, you have to know, when he say, have faith in God, he say, have confidence in God. And when he says, you know, that is trust in God, have confidence in God. That is Mark 11, for instance. But when he comes and says, faith is the substance of things to hope for. Now, he's not talking about confidence. Because he went further, chapter 11, Hebrew, and verse 4. He says, for by faith, Abel, offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. So, you won't say it is by confidence. By what? Revelation. So, when you speak about fornication and adultery, you have to read it in the context. It is a problem that takes place after you are married. Fornication, you catch her with another man after you are married. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And in this period of grace, which Jesus Christ came to introduce, Amen. You cannot hold somebody guilty except there is a law that he has broken. You cannot hold a woman guilty of breaking a vow until she has entered into the vow. And she stayed, she has taken a vow to live faithfully to you, hold on to you and you alone. If after that she goes to another man, she has broken a vow. That is the basis for your putting her away. Not that after you married her, you discover that she's not a virgin. You can only put her away if you discover she's not a virgin. If during courtship you ask her, are you a virgin? She say, wallahi, wallahi, I don't know man. <laughs> and you say, fine. Because me, I say, I will not. Now, in the law, in Israel, it was compulsory for a young woman to marry. I mean, for you to remain a virgin. It was compulsory. And there will be the evidence of virginity on your wedding night. The first night of your wedding, the next day, 
everybody in the relations they are waiting for the confirmation they will, there is a piece of cloth that you will use to wipe the blood that you disvirgin her to show everybody that yes I married a virgin it was in the law but now we are in grace praise the Lord virginity in grace begins from the day you exchange your vow from when during your courtship that is you know there are two vows you make when you meet and you agree to marry each other and the one that you will uh, exchange on the day you are getting married the one that enables you to start your courtship is a vow. Because it is under that vow that I promise I will marry you, promise you will marry me, that we are having our courtship. From the day we met, you don't meet any other man. Even the man you are having the courtship with, as far as heaven is concerned, from that day, you remain a virgin. God sees you as a virgin. And that's the reason why the pastor will first ask you any impediment. And in grace, it is not only for the woman, it is also for the man. You are not to meet any woman, she is not to meet any man throughout your period of courtship. So, and if during that period of courtship, you break that vow, you can put her away. She can put you away. Praise the Lord. So that is the virginity as far as Christianity is concerned. And also, it is even more glorious. Part of the virtue of a Christian. That you give your life to Christ as a virgin. Physically, you are virgin. That you are able to keep it. Now that you are in Christ, you did not defy yourself as an unbeliever. Until you come to Christ, it's of great price to that young girl if she can keep it until the day of her wedding. And I always say something such a girl, God will not give you a bad man for a husband, it will be a reward for keeping yourself a man that will cherish you. The truth is, that man will be proud of you. That man will respect you. That man will know that he owns you and owns you totally. You will be precious. But let him not condemn those who chop, 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 chop. Before they found Christ. It is not to condemn you. You are the perfect example of grace. Despite this, Christ accepted me. And when you give your life to Christ, you also swear until I marry, no man will see me. God looks at you the same way he looks at the girl that has not defiled herself physically. And also because of that decision and you are able to keep it, he also gives you a fine man for reward. Because since you met Christ, you made that vow and you kept it. And remember, once you make that vow, praise the Lord, you will see temptations. You will see temptations. And why is it a reward? A reward is always for the overcomers. That you are able to overcome those temptations. God looks at you and says, I will reward your decision with a good husband. Praise the Lord. But with a chop, chop. During the court himself, you will go here, chop, go here, chop. You will do come corner, 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 corner. Now so devil will just give you one. Uh -huh. And you are wondering why I wedded in the church. I wedded this. Did you follow the law of marriage? So, brother, why I'm saying so, not only to you, but to those who intellectually interpret scriptures. That scripture is talking about sexual sin. You find out that she has committed a sexual sin. You catch her in it. You can put her away. That's what Jesus Christ is saying. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's well understood. Finally, another question. Please, um, a scripture says that God hates divorce. And we know that scripture doesn't contradict scriptures. Yes. 
except in the case of fornication. What is his relationship with that scripture? Yes. Uh, except in the case of fornication, that's divorce being permitted. Yes. What is his relationship with the scripture that says that God hates divorce? Are they contradictory? It's a question, sir. God bless the you. same God that said it is making it clearer to you. Is it the man that said it? Is it Jesus that said it? Eh? So why are you confused? If the same Bible that says suffer not a witch to live and the same Bible that says tooth for tooth eye for an eye and in another scripture he said if your enemy is hungry give him food. He said bless them that curse you. It's the same God that said it. So you have to understand grace. God's dealing with man is progressive. It's progressive. There was a time that people committed sin and he wiped the whole world because of sin. But now, the sin that the world is committing now is worse than what it was at that time. And yet, amen, he's not killing the world. Why? He's displaying his mercy. He's not killing, he's not wiping the world. Hallelujah. Instead, and the Bible says he's the Lord, he changes the Lord. So you have to understand the mercy of God. His progress is progressing. God bless you. I think that's all. Hallelujah. Sisters, we went to the camp.